What's up guys? So, a little bit more mobility work coming for you today. Um, if you haven't already, go through and do that morning cars routine. If it's something you've been doing on your own and you're kind of comfortable to do it on your own, you can just pause the video and go ahead and do that now. Um, if you haven't, I did put up a video earlier with some, uh, with just a different variation, some standing variations of that morning cars routine, just to kind of you know get us warmed up for this more intense mobility, as well as um, just maintaining the range of motion we have and the assessment purposes I talked about in that video. So if you haven't already gone through those movements, um, go do those now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, again, go check out that video that I posted a little while ago. Um, that being said, today's um, session is going to focus mostly on hips, a little bit of shoulders, and a little bit of spine. This will be good for kind of general mobility work, just um, keeping everything functioning the way it should. Um, it's going to be very good for jujitsu, kind of playing these different guards, working the rotation of our hips, um, working the rotation of our shoulders to prevent injuries. Um, this um, kind of sequence we're going to be working on today is actually also going to be very good if you're somebody who likes to lift weights this will be really good for helping mobility in your back squat position um, again we're going to be working some rotation of the hips shoulders and um, some extension of the upper back so all of that stuff will work really well um, if you have a problem holding good position on a back squat so stuff should be good you know and if you don't do any of those things it's just good for general mobility most people's hips back and shoulders are pretty tight as it is so so give you some stuff to work on so I'm gonna get right into it here I'm gonna start before we get into the pails and rails which we'll talk about that what that means in a minute we're gonna start with some more cars kind of like we did in our warm-up but these are going to be focusing specifically on the joint capsule and um, just getting the, those joint capsules moving a little bit more, kind of getting everything lubricated and ready to go. So we're going to start with a capsular shoulder car. So we're just going to start with our arms in this 90 degree position. Really good doing this on video because I can actually see and make sure I'm not cheating. But where it's here, all we're going to do is we're working rotating those hands back as far as we can without letting the elbows drop or the shoulders raise up. So we're just pushing those hands back towards the wall behind us. Make sure as we do this, taking that big breath into our into our core. So big breath, inflating that balloon around your lower abdomen. So breathing to the lower stomach, getting everything locked in place. We have some nice tension, so we're not moving as we do this. So we're here in this position, pushing those hands back, holding for a second without letting that shoulder position move. We're coming down. Hold for a second and back up. Bring those hands to the wall behind you. Coming back down into internal shoulder rotation. Really trying to push those palms towards the wall behind you without letting the shoulders move. Back up. And down. Trying to keep those shoulders and elbows level the whole time. Trying to let those shoulders shrug up. Back. So we're not leaning back as we do this. Everything's locked in place. And one more. Each direction. Good. Really rotating those shoulders back. You should feel this in the muscles in the back of your shoulders. Back down. Last one. Good. So you should feel that a little bit through your deltoids as well as um, through those rotator cuff muscles. So you should feel a little bit of work there. All right, just, just getting those shoulder joints moving before we start really kind of expanding the range of motion, which we'll get to in a minute. Next one, we're going to be going to do the same thing, but on our hips. So, let's see. I'm going to lay back here. Make sure you see me. So, I'm going to start with just one leg up, so the other leg's flat on the floor. Got my leg bent at 90 degrees. So, from that position, all I'm doing is going to rotate my foot in towards the center line of my body as much as possible, working that hip external rotation, holding that for a second, and then bringing that foot out. It's going into internal hip rotation, reaching as far as we can, and back. Good, hold for a second at the end range. Back in. Make sure to keep that 90 degree angle all the way out. 
all the way in, hold for a second, really pulling in, and out, don't let that leg position move as you go, we're just trying to rotate through that hip, one more, foot comes in, holding that 90 degree angle, foot comes out, you'll probably notice, for most people at least, that the internal rotation is going to be a lot less than the external rotation, so when your foot's coming to the inside, you could come a lot further this way than you can this way. That's pretty typical. Um, just getting ourselves warmed up to a little bit harder stuff here. So same thing, right leg. So left leg's flat on the floor. Again, bringing that leg in as far as you can, rotating through that hip. Nice pop there. And then come to the outside. As far in as we can. To the outside. Good. Inside. Outside. Really rotating. Let's explain what pails and rails are. Uh, pails and rails in the FRC system are going to be the main tools that we use for expanding our range of motion. So not just maintaining, but actually getting and building up bigger ranges of motion. So progressive angular isometric loading, that's pails. So again, progressive angular isometric loading. So progressive just means that we're trying to make the angle of the stretch bigger. Uh, we'll explain what that means when we actually get into the movements, but obviously progressive angle is what that P and A are talking about. And then isometric loading just means that we're, we shouldn't be moving. There should be minimal movement in each of these because we're bringing our joint to the end range. Um, we should bring it we should be bringing it to the point where it's actually unable to move any further, but we're using um, using all those small muscles to try to actively pull that further into that range of motion, even though it might not actually move in any appreciable way. Um, rails is just the opposite of that. It's a regressive angle isometric loading. So the regressive angle means we're pulling ourselves further into the stretch. So this will make more sense as I kind of get into the specific movements, but I wanted you guys to have some understanding of what these are and what they do before we get into it. So again, these pails and rails are both to build up our range of motion and also to strengthen those end ranges of motion. We're gonna be starting actually from the ankles and moving up. So again, whether it's just for general range of motion, general mobility improvement, especially with squatting, um, Ankles tend to be a big issue for people. A lot of people's ankles, especially mine, are really stiff and you don't get much dorsiflexion. Uh, with, when you're squatting, that could put you in a pretty bad position. It makes it hard to keep the barbell over your center of gravity. Uh, with other things, with jujitsu, obviously you want your ankles to be able to move. With striking, you want your ankles to be able to move. Um, you don't want to have to compensate for our bodies to go where we want them to. So that being said, let's work on building up some mobility in these ankles. All right, so I'm gonna start off in combat base. So if you don't do jujitsu, it's, it's gonna be a collapsed combat base, so I'm not all the way up here. Sitting back on one foot, other foot's on the ground. So in this case, I'm just sitting on my left foot, hip is directly over that foot, right foot is flat on the floor, bring that ankle in close. You see, I'm trying to press this knee out in front of my toes as far as I can without letting this heel lift off the floor. So I wanna make sure that heel's staying down the whole time. Back stays nice and flat if I can. So again, ankle stays down, toes are pointed forward. All I'm doing, leaning forward, feel that stretch. I'm going as far forward as I can without that heel coming up. From here, actually let's get a timer going so we can see how long we're holding this. I don't wanna cheat you guys. and. When things are hard, we tend to count a little faster than we should. So let me just get a timer going. All right, so I'm gonna lean into this, just hugging that knee, really driving that knee out in front of the toes, not letting that ankle come up. Holding that position, when we're ready, we're gonna start gas pedaling that foot down into the floor, so we're pushing those toes down, actively driving to the floor at 20% progressively ramping up the amount of contraction we have there, going up to 40%, nice smooth continual increase, 60%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 
and 100%. So we're pressing those toes down as hard as we can. We're holding that for 10 seconds. Keep it up, pressing it to the floor as hard as we can. We've got five more seconds. Three, two, one. We're gonna stay in that position, not relax out of that. From here, when we're ready, we're gonna start pulling those toes up. Again, it's isometric, so the toes won't actually lift, but we wanna think about lifting the toes off the floor, pulling ourselves further into that stretch. Let's go, 10 seconds. Pulling those toes up, pulling ourselves further into that stretch. Three, two, one, good. We're gonna try to get a little bit further into that stretch if we can, so keeping that heel down, everything's coming forward, knees coming in front of the toes, ready, driving that foot down to the floor again, going second round on these pails. So this is our pails contraction, pressing at 20%, pressing those toes down to the floor, 40%, 60, 80. Now we're driving those toes through the floor as hard as we can, really stomping that gas pedal to the floor, holding that for 10 seconds, as hard as we can. Rest of the body is nice and tensed up. We got five more seconds, keep holding. Really press that down and relax. We're not coming out of that position though. When we're ready, we're going back into our rails contraction, so we're pulling ourselves further into the stretch. So we're ready in three, two, one. Lifting those toes, trying to pull our toes off the floor. Really holding that position. Going for 10 seconds total. So we got six seconds left. Ready, three, two, one. Relax. I'm gonna go once more through on this leg so we're not coming out of this stretch yet. Ready, last round on the pails. So again, pressing those toes into the floor, trying to really drive against that stretch, 20%, 40%. 60, slowly ramping up to 80. <sighs> Pressing down as hard as we can with those toes. So we're trying to gas pedal to the floor as hard as we can. <sighs> 10 seconds, keep holding that. Really driving those toes down. Three, two, one. Coming back into the rails contraction. So we're trying to lift those toes up. <sighs> Lifting those toes as much effort as we can. They're not gonna come up, but we wanna pretend like we're gonna pull them off the ground. <sighs> And relax, we're just gonna hold in that position for another second. Really let those tissues in the back of the ankle stretch out. Um, so letting that Achilles tendon stretch a little bit. Good, we're gonna slowly come out of that. So you come out of that, your ankle is gonna feel a little bit tight. That's normal. If you wanna move that around a little bit slowly, gently, um, they'll start feeling a little bit better in a few seconds. For the first few seconds, that's gonna feel nice and tight there. Um, again, nothing to worry about. Um, should have mentioned this earlier, but as we talked about last time, um, getting into the beginning of this, closing angle pain. I want to make sure I'm feeling the stretch in the back of my ankle. If I'm doing this and I feel like bones running into each other in the front of my ankle, there's pain there then, that's an issue and we want to back off a little bit. But if you just feel a stretch in the back, you're okay. As long as nothing in the front feels kind of crunchy or any sharp pain, you're good. But um, we want to make sure we're not feeling too much pain on the closing angle side, so the opposite side of our stretch. All right, that being said, switching everything up, going to the opposite side. So same thing, other leg. So back into this combat base. Make sure we're sitting on that heel so we're not letting those hips come out to the side. Again, I'll change, see. Good. As we're doing this, see if you notice any difference in range of motion of the left side compared to the right side or whichever side you did first. So when we're ready, Again, keeping that heel on the ground, driving that knee out in front. So again, get as big stretch as you can. Try to get that knee out in front of the toes without letting the heel come up. We're gonna hold that stretch for a second. Let's really get our body used to being in that position. Okay, when we're ready, we're gonna start gas pedaling down this foot. So 20%, so pushing that foot down to the floor, slowly ramping up 40, 60, 80, and a hundred, so we're pressing that foot into the floor as hard as we can, holding that for 10 seconds, actively driving down, trying to crush those toes into the floor. Three, two, one, gonna relax. Then we're gonna start pulling those toes up, ready? Into that rails contraction, we're trying to lift those toes off the floor. Meanwhile, make sure that heel doesn't come up. Really pulling those toes up as hard as we can. Three, two, one. Relax, that's one down, we got two more on these. 
So really feeling that stretch through the back of our calf and the back of our ankle. Ready to go, starting that gas pedaling motion again, pushing those toes into the floor, 25%. Ramping up to 50, 75, and 100. That's as hard as you can push down, holding that for 10 seconds. Keep it up. Three, two, one. We're gonna relax, but we're not coming out of that stretch. We're gonna start pulling those toes off the floor and lift. 10 seconds, trying to lift those toes up. Get actively trying to make that angle in the front of our ankle smaller. So we're trying to pull our shin forward, pull our toes up. Two, one. Relax. We got one more cycle on these. Ready, going back into that pales contraction now, pressing those toes down into the floor, 25. Ramping up to 50. Ramping up to 75. And 100%, driving your foot down as hard as we can for 10 seconds. Actively pushing that whole time. So pushing against the angle of stretch, the toes pressing into the floor. And relax. Now, coming back into that rails contraction. So, pulling those toes off the floor and go. <sighs> Holding that for 10 seconds, trying to get those toes up off the floor. Knee forward. Hold. <sighs> Two, one. Relax, but we're going to stay in that stretch. She's not coming out of that yet, so it's leaning forward. Getting a nice passive stretch through the back of the ankle. Make sure we're breathing. Um, our nervous system is going to control our muscles, so if we're really tight and holding our breath here, it's going to be hard to get that stretch. So breathing in and out, nice, slow, controlled. Our exhales should be longer than our inhales to signal that nervous system to kind of let go of some tension. And good, we can relax out of that. All right, so that's our first one. So we're starting to get those ankles a little bit more loosened up. It's gonna feel a little bit tight and crampy after that again. That's normal, it'll go away in a couple minutes. Uh, nothing to worry about. So as we move on, we're going back to that 90-90 position that we introduced last week. So we're gonna be doing some more pails and rails from the 90-90 hip position. So if you didn't watch the video last week, positions you can see. So, got one leg out in front, one leg out to the side. Both the knees and the hips are bent at 90 degrees. So, face you see here. So, one in front, one out to the side. All right, so we're gonna work both internal and external rotation of the hips. So we're gonna start off with internal rotation. Same idea with our pales rails. Again, if, this, if you can't hold this position comfortably, we might have to bring things in a little bit further. All right, you work with what you have, but ideally, you wanna have 90 degree angle, both directions. We're gonna start by leaning out over this front leg. Back is nice and straight, so we're not rounding our back down here. We're not kind of cheating to get this motion. Everything's up, chest is up, chest is driving out over that knee. Hands are on the ground if we need them for balance. If not, we could be here, keeping everything nice and tight. I wanna make sure I'm radiating pressure, uh, radiating tension through my core and the rest of my body so other parts of my body aren't moving as I do this. All right, so starting off, getting a good stretch here. We should feel this through the outside of our hip, so it should be kind of down the side of our hip bone and um, like on the outside edge of our butt. So here, once I feel that stretch, keeping that chest up, all I'm gonna do is I'm start driving this heel, knee, and shin of the front leg into the floor. So 20% tension, I'm trying to crush it to the floor. Instead of um, wrap it up to 40%, 60%, 80, and 100. Pressing down as hard as we can for 10 seconds. Like I said last week, pretend you have the winning lottery ticket hidden underneath that heel and your knee. You're pressing it down as hard as you can the whole time. Two, one, relax. Good, we're staying in this stretch, but we're gonna try to pull ourselves further. So we're gonna be trying to lift that heel up off the floor. 
but we're not just leaning back to lift it. I'm keeping myself leaning forward. I'm trying to pull this hip up and pull this heel up. Ready? And lift. Trying to lift that heel off the ground. <sighs> Holding that for 10 seconds. <sighs> Good. Five more seconds. Really try to get that heel up. Three, two, one. <sighs> Good. We can relax. <sighs> if, you, if you're able to, we can go a little further into that stretch. If not, stay where you are. Here, radiating or hands on the floor for balance. I'm going to go back into that pales contraction. So we're pressing that ankle, knee, and hip into the floor again, starting at 20%. Gradually ramping that up to 40, 60, 80, and 100. Press it out as hard as we can. Hold it for 10 seconds. Five more seconds. Keep it up. Really pressing. And relax. Now we're gonna go back to that rails contraction, try to lift that heel up, try to externally rotate our hip. Ready, and lifting that heel, 10 seconds. Keeping that strong position, heels come, trying to get that heel off the ground, it shouldn't be moving. Hold, three, two, one. Good, that's two down, we got one more on this side. Ready. Back to that pales contraction. Starting to push down 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, pressing that heel, knee, and shin into the floor as hard as you can, holding that for 10 seconds. Really try to crush the floor. Really feel the stretch through the outside of our hip here. And relax. Starting to lift that heel and go. Lifting that heel off the floor. Track it nice and hard, pulling ourselves further into that stretch, trying to rotate that heel up towards us. Keep going, we've got five more seconds. Three, two, one. We can relax a little bit. We're gonna stay in the same position, but now we're gonna be working internal rotation on the back leg. So this one was external rotation, so this hip was rotating towards the outside. Maintain the same position, but now as we go start attacking the back foot here, we're gonna be working internal rotation on that back hip. So again, we're gonna be lifting, rotating this hip in. Um, again, as we saw in those capsular cars at the beginning, most people's range of motion is bigger in external rotation than it is in internal, so you're probably not gonna be able to pull yourself quite as far into this position. All right, so we're back to the 90-90. Again, I wanna turn my body to face the leg I'm working on. So, I'm facing this trailing leg, I'm turning my torso in that direction. I'm gonna do the same thing, it's the same procedure. I'm pressing that heel, sh uh, shin bone, and knee into the floor. So we're gonna start at 20%. Again, we're gonna feel this a little bit further in the hip, right in the front here. So 40, 60, 80, really pressing down, and 100, holding that for 10 seconds at that maximum contraction. Trying to crush the floor, keeping our body nice and locked in. Two, one, relax. Good, we're gonna start lifting that heel off the floor. So we're trying to pull ourselves further into that stretch and go 10 seconds. Try to lift that heel up. Almost there, three more seconds. Two, one and relax that tension, but we're staying in the same position here. Ready to go, second time through on this leg, give you a second. Ready, so we're starting to press down with that heel, shin, and knee, 20%, 40%, slowly ramping up to 60, and 80, and 100, we're pressing into the floor as hard as we can with all of those, holding for 10 seconds. Really facing the leg that we're trying to stretch. Three, two, one. Relax. Now we're pulling that heel off the floor. Ready? And rails contraction lift. Five more seconds. Three, two, one. Relax. All right, so got one more on this back leg before we switch and do everything again on the opposite side. Ready, 
driving that heel, shin and knee into the floor, and go 20%, 40, ramp into 60, gradually up to 80, and up to 100, the maximum contraction you can get without pain, pressing as hard as we can, we got 10 seconds in that position, hold it for three more seconds, two, one, relax, last one, we're gonna be lifting back into that pails, or that rails contraction rather, so lifting that heel up, and go, 10 seconds, trying to lift that heel off the floor, trying to use all the small muscles on our hips to pull that heel towards the ceiling, three, two, one, and relax. We finished one side, we're repeating this all on the opposite side. So all I'm doing here is the leg, the trailing leg, so the leg that I stretched last. I'm just driving that heel into the floor as I transition from one side to the other. I wanna make sure I'm keeping these knees as far apart as possible. So nice, tight, tough transition here. So locking in some tension through my body. I'm lifting that knee as high as I can. The other knee isn't moving yet. Once I run out of range of motion here, that's as high as I can get that. So now I'm gonna let the other knee start lifting off the floor. Try to keep these knees as far apart as I can the whole time. That left knee is gonna touch down first or whichever side was trailing. Now we're going to 90-90 on the other side. I'm gonna move myself back just so you can see me again. But doing the same thing, repeating it all on the opposite side. All right, let me just make sure you can see. So let me angle myself here. So going back to that front leg, working that external rotation of that hip. So we're here at our 90-90, where we're ready, our chest is up, body is parallel with this femur, leaning forward, back straight. Once we're ready, we're gonna start driving that shin, knee, and foot into the floor, and 20%. Ramping that pressure up, 40, 60, 80, and 100. So driving down as hard as we can, make sure we keep that stretch, holding that for 10 seconds. Again, got that $10 million lottery check hidden underneath your heel. We don't want people to take that, so we're crushing the floor. Two, one, relax. Good, we're gonna go 10 seconds on a rails contraction, so starting to lift that heel up, and go. We're trying to pull that heel off the floor. <sighs> Actively trying to raise that. Let's go. We got five more seconds. Really lift that heel up. And relax. One down, two more on this front leg. Ready? Regenerating that tension through the core if we lost it. Starting to drive that heel down into the floor, knee and shin. 20. We're up and up to 40. Now it's 60%. 80 and maximum tension, driving as hard into the floor as we can. 10 seconds, hold. Three more seconds, two, one, and relax, going further into that stretch if we can. From here, trying to lift that heel again, ready, and lift that heel up. It's not gonna actually move, but we wanna really try to lift it off the floor. So holding that for 10 seconds, so we got five seconds left. Lifting the whole time, three, two, one. Good, sink it further into that stretch yet again if we can. Last one, ready, 20% pressure down. Again, knee, ankle, and shin all driving to the floor. 40%, 60, 80, and 100% driving down as hard as we can. 10 seconds, we're holding. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, and relax. Again, nice far into that stretch. We should really feel it through the outside of the hip. Now we're lifting that hip off the floor, or that heel off the floor, rather. Let's go, 10 seconds, trying to lift that heel up. As much effort as we can give it, guys. Really trying to get that heel off the ground. Three, two, one, and relax. Going to that back leg now, so adjusting here. Again, rotating myself, so my torso is gonna to be parallel with this femur in the back leg, so everything's facing that back femur. Working internal rotation on the right leg now. 
So everything's here. We're ready. Gonna start with that palace contraction. So again, heel, shin, and knee driving to the floor, 20%. 40, 60, ramping up to 80, and 100. Driving as hard as we can for 10 seconds, holding that contraction, really driving to the floor, trying to crush the ground with your heel. Three, two, one, relax. Now try to lift that heel up, try to rotate our hip. 10 seconds, hold, really lifting the whole time, trying to get that heel off the floor. Three, two, one, relax. Good, two more. So, here, ready. Driving everything down, 20%. 40, 60, and 80%, and 100. Pushing down as hard as we can, we got 10 seconds. Keeping that chest up, everything locked in. We got three seconds left, two, one, and moving to that rails contraction, we're starting to try to lift that heel off the floor. 10 seconds, let's go. Three, two, one, relax. Pull ourselves a little further into the stretch if we can. Again, there's not gonna be a whole lot of range of motion in this direction for most people. Uh, you got one more left on this one. Ready, in three, two, one, pressing down 20%, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Pressing as hard as we can into that floor, holding that for 10 seconds. Whew. Five, four, three, two, one. And last one on this leg, we're lifting that heel up, working that external, pulling into the external rotation for 10 seconds, let's go. Uh, going 10 seconds as hard as we can, trying to really lift that heel up. In three, two, one, and relax. Move those hips around a little bit if you need to. Again, everything's gonna feel a little bit tight there. Um, if you're feeling nice and warm now, guys, that should be pretty tough if you're really giving that your full effort. Um, from here, we're gonna move into a little bit of work on our shoulders now, kind of give our lower body a break. Uh, stuff's pretty taxing. So next one, we're gonna be working external rotation of our shoulders. So external rotation is gonna be this direction if you're a jujitsu guy, um, an Americanist external rotation, a Kimura's internal rotation. Um, you think about that, if where, where your hands would be going, if your elbows were against your side, here I'm rotating externally away from my body. Luckily, this one actually works. I'm like, the legs are kind of backwards, but internal rotation's coming towards me, external rotation's going away from me. With the legs, the position of your shin kind of lies to you there, and it's the opposite. But again, we're gonna be working this external rotation. So, we're gonna need some kind of tools to do this, unless we have almost no range of motion in our shoulders. I might actually have to adjust the camera here, we'll see. But, I basically need to bring myself, oof, angle's weird here, <laughs> bring myself to the end range of motion, so as far as I can passively go, into that external rotation. And we're gonna do the same thing, it's gonna be pales and rails. So I'm gonna be pressing against that, and then I'm gonna be trying to lift off. So unless you have next to no external rotation, we're gonna need something to um, put our hand against to get a little extra room here. So, what I'm gonna do, I've got a couple yoga blocks here. I might need one, I might need two. I haven't worked on my shoulders in a little while, so they're probably gonna be worse than I think. If you don't have these, Again, like the other day, when we were doing that backpack workout, if you have books, throw up a stack of books, throw your hand on top. Anything that you could press into that'll lift your hand higher than your shoulder will do the trick. Anything that's flat that you could press into that's not gonna crush. So if you don't have a yoga block, you know, get a stack of books as high as you need to bring your shoulder to the end range of motion for external rotation. So let me see how I have to position myself for you to see me here. So for this, I'm gonna go face down on the floor, I want to make sure I'm keeping my elbow at 90 degrees here, so I don't want to be in like this. I want to make sure this is 90 degrees as I'm working this external rotation. And I'm going to bring that as far as I comfortably can. So again, if it was Americana, we'd be pretending that it was staying at 90 degrees the whole time. We'd be going as far back as where we would be just getting ready to tap. And we want to hold that position. So, 
that makes sense. Let me see if you actually see me here. So, not really, but we'll have to make it work. So, that's not quite the end range of motion for me, so I'll turn this block on its side so I'm a little bit higher up. I sh if I'm at the end range of motion, guys, the way we know, especially for now a block or st um, a stack of books or whatever, if I'm able to actually lift my hands off, it means it's not high enough. So I want to try to bring it as close to where, as close as I can to where I'm at the end range of motion and I can't actually lift my arm off. Again, pales and rails are supposed to be isometric contractions. So if I'm here and then I go to do my rails contraction and I'm pulling it back further, that's not a rails contraction, that's a lift off. So I want to make sure I'm actually at my end range of motion. So when I go into my rails, when I'm on, my, on the floor, if I'm at the end range here, my hand's resting on the block, when I try to lift up, <laughs> I should really be using a ton of tension to try to pull that back, but my hand really shouldn't be moving. If, I, if it is, it should be a few millimeters at most. It shouldn't be big, big movement there, all right? So we're trying to get to that end range of motion and strengthen. So our pales contraction here is just gonna be, sorry, I'm trying to get 90 degrees here, pressing into that block or those books. And our rails contraction is gonna be actively trying to lift our hand off, but again, we shouldn't actually be able to lift. So we're gonna go three times each one on each side here. All right, so when we're ready, we get ourselves in position. Again, if you need to pause this to go grab books or yoga blocks or whatever you have, do it and then join us back. So I'm here. So elbows at 90 degrees. The top of my arms coming straight out from my body. When I'm ready, going into the stretch position. Now I'm gonna start my pales contraction. So I'm starting to drive my hand down, pressing into this yoga block, 20%, 40, 60, 80. Slowly ramping up to 100%, holding that contraction for 10 seconds. <sighs> Pressing down as hard as I can for that whole 10 seconds. Three, two, one. I'm gonna switch to my rails contraction, so I'm trying to pull my hand off this block <sighs> for 10 seconds. <sighs> gonna hold that contraction, five more seconds. Lifting, lifting, lifting. Three, two, one. <sighs> Relax. Sink a little bit further into the stretch if I'm able to. If not, I'll stay where I was, making sure that elbow stays at 90 the whole time. Ready, slowly ramping up that contraction, pressing into that block, 20%, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Pressing down as hard as we can into that block. <sighs> Holding that for 10 seconds. Keep it going, we have five seconds left on this one. Push, 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 three, Two, one, gonna reverse direction. Gonna really be trying to lift this hand up. Shouldn't actually be moving though, so we're trying to lift that hand to the ceiling. Hold it for 10 seconds. Five seconds left. Really trying to lift that hand away from the block. And relax. Got one more on this side. All right guys, so we're ready. Gonna start pressing down to that block, 20%. 40, 60, 80, and 100. Pressing down as hard as we can. Holding that for 10 seconds. Really pressing into that block. Really trying to work all the small muscles in the front of our shoulders. We got three, two, one. Last one, we're lifting off. Trying to pull the back of that hand to the ceiling. 10 seconds, maximum effort. Everything else is tight, so none of the rest of our body's moving. Two, one, and relax. Got a nice little cramp in my hand at the end there. <laughs> Again, you're gonna feel a little bit tight in that shoulder. That's fine, just work it out. Again, might have to adjust our angles if anything we're doing here is giving us, again, sharp pain, or if you feel anything pinching in your shoulder. Obviously, we don't want that, so you should feel a stretch, you shouldn't feel pain, all right? So we're gonna switch up, we're gonna do the same thing on the left arm. All right. So, again, down our chest, elbows at 90 degrees, keeping that chest to the floor. Let me move my timer so I can see. So elbows at 90, chest is on the floor, big external rotation through that shoulder, we should feel that stretch. 
from here, we're gonna start driving our hand down into that block. All right, drive down 20%, 40, 60, 80, and 100, pressing as hard as we can. I can already feel I don't have as much motion on this side. We're holding this for 10 seconds, pressing as hard as we can in three, two, one, going into that rails contraction, trying to lift up the block, not losing that arm position, holding for 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Make sure we're keeping that elbow position same, the same the entire time so we're not moving our elbow as we adjust, so keeping everything at 90 degrees. Go to the second round on this left side in three, two, one, slowly ramping up the pressure. 25, slowly ramping up to 50%, 75%, and 100, pressing down as hard as we can, holding that for 10 seconds, 3, 2, 1, good, we're going to that rails, we're trying to lift that hand off the block, we're using just our shoulder muscles, 10 seconds, let's really go, should be minimal movement off that block. Really trying to lift. Three, two, one, and relax. Got one more. Last one on the side, guys. Ready, 20%, 40. Driving down at 60. Really trying to crush that block, 80. And 100, pressing down as hard as we can into that block for 10 seconds. Good. Straight down. Three, two, one. Switching to our rails contraction. So we're trying to lift that hand off the block. If it lifts at all, it should be minimal. Hold that for 10 seconds. We should probably be shaking a little bit here if we're really going for it. Five seconds left. Three, two, one. And relax. All right, guys. So, that's the last of our pails and rails. Um, I've got one more kind of exercise for you guys to do today that's going to um, just kind of work us into this squat pattern. Again, whether you're doing this for jiu-jitsu or Muay Thai or Krav or whatever you're doing it for, or even for weightlifting, this squat position is really important. Important. We should be able to sit comfortably in the bottom of a squat. Um, so, we're going to kind of work this squat to stand that I like to do in our warm-ups, but we're going to do it in a way where we're holding a little bit longer at the bottom. So for a lot of people, if you're like me and you're limited in ankle dorsiflexion, you very well may need to put something underneath your heels to actually make this possible. A lot of times for me, if I try to do this without anything under my heels, when I come down, if I try to hold this, I end up falling forward. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab a couple pieces of mat here. Um, if you have like a five pound weight plate or even just a folded up dish towel or something you could put under your heels here, that'll be good. Um, again, if you have flexible ankles, you're not gonna need this, but if your ankle dorsiflexion isn't that good, you're gonna wanna add something to help you keep from falling over. So we wanna be able to hold this position for a few seconds and actually maintain a good body position. So we're gonna cheat and lift our heels a little bit. Um, so we're able to put the rest of our body in the position it should be in. All right, guys, so you can see enough of my body here. Um, my head's gonna cut off when I stand all the way up, but it's the same squat to stand movement that we do when we're warming up in a lot of my group fitness classes and a lot of the video classes I've been doing lately. So all I'm doing, for me, again, because my ankles are not great, I've got these mats kind of stacked under my ankles, or under my heels, rather. I'm gonna turn my toes out wherever I need them to for a comfortable squat position. This is gonna vary a little bit person to person. So kind of find your comfortable squat position where you can just kind of sit in that squat. Um, so you might have to play with your positioning first, but your toes might need to be a little bit out. Some people can do it straight forward. My toes tend to angle out about 20 to 30 degrees as I do this. So find that comfortable squat position for yourself. And once you've found that, um, we're gonna start off by just bending down grabbing underneath those toes. Some, you can't see my toes too well here, but I'm just grabbing and lifting my toes off the floor. So from here, I'm pulling myself down into a squat. My arms stay nice and straight. I'm trying to pull my shoulders back. Knees drive apart. We're holding this for five seconds. 
three, two, one, and back up. Stretching out those hamstrings at the top. So we're holding that stretch, staying bent over, pulling up on those toes. I'm gonna do five of these total, going into the second one. I'm gonna pull myself down to a squat. Again, arms are staying nice and straight. Knees are driving out, chest is up, shoulders are pulling back. Head looking directly forward in three, two, one. Up, letting the back of those legs stretch out. Okay, going on to number three, pull myself down. Again, not letting those arms bend, trying to pull those shoulders back, big proud chest, showing off the strong kitchen logo on my shirt. And up. Again, pushing those hips back, good stretch through the hamstrings. We got two more. Pulling up on those toes, pulling ourselves down into position, arms are nice and straight, driving those knees out, getting as low as we can. I'm a little sitting on my heels here. Pulling the shoulder blades together, chest up and out. And we got one more. Really let the back of those legs stretch. Going into our last one, trying to get as low as we can on this. So arms are nice and straight, chest is up, butts on the floor or close to it. Shoulders are pulling back behind us. Three, two, one. Holding that stretch through the back of our legs. And good. So that's it for today, guys. Um, this video went a little bit longer than I planned, but um, Hope you're gonna get something good out of this, um, work on that squat mobility. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, or you know, when you're going through those, those cars routines, if you're feeling anything specifically that needs work, leave it in the comments below. Say like, hey, my wrist mobility is not great, or my ankles, or my hips, or my shoulders, or my upper back, lower back. Whatever problem it is that you're, that you're running into, um, let me know and we can definitely focus on or at least give you some tools you could use to work on the part of your body that's that's giving you the most issues. Like I said, we want to use these cars to kind of do an assessment to see what parts of our body need work. It's cool going through these classes and all, but we want to work on the parts of our body that actually need it. So drop that in the comments or you know shoot me a message if there's something specific you want to work on. All right, thanks guys. See you next time.